Hi friends, welcome to Science Jagat. So in this video, we are going to talk about elicitors. What are elicitors, their types, parameters for elicitation, methodology of elicitation. So what are elicitors? These are the compounds obtained from living, biotic and non-living sources like abiotic sources which can induce plant responses to stress leading to aggravated biosynthesis of secondary plant metabolites and the process is termed as elicitation. So what are secondary metabolites? I am going to tell you this in the further video. Elicitors which are produced within the cell, plant cell are endogenous and these are pectin, pectic acid, cellulose and some other polysaccharides. Elicitors which are produced by the microorganisms are referred as exogenous elicitors. It could be chitin, ketosin, glucans, etc. So let's see what are secondary plant metabolites. So these are the organic compounds produced by plants that help them survive and reproduce. A class of metabolites that help plants defend against pathogens. So secondary metabolites provide plants immune immunity or they are helpful in generating immune response for certain kind of pathogens or chemical compounds. Okay, so let's see what are the types of elicitors. So elicitors are divided into two types that is abiotic and biotic. First, let's see abiotic elicitors. Abiotic elicitors are further divided into chemical and physical elicitors. So chemical elicitors could be heavy metals like Ag, copper, cadmium or others like ozone and pH. The physical elicitors can also be further divided or these all uh, things can be added in physical elicitors like UV radiation, osmotic stress, salinity, thermal stress, ultrasound. Now let's see what are biotic elicitors. Biotic elicitors are also further divided into endogenous and exogenous. So first let's focus on endogenous. Endogenous elicitors could be plant cell wall fragments or plant hormones like jasmonic acid, salicyclic acid, ethylene etc. And second one is the exogenous elicitors. These could be proteins like cellulase, volatiles like hydrocarbons, carbohydrates like chitin, chitosan, dextrin, gorgum and complex like yeast extracts, fungal spores or bacterial lysates. Okay, so let's see how we can utilize elicitation for plant tissue culture in various aspects of research. So elicitor application could be used for in vitro as well as in vivo studies. In cellular and molecular changes, we use in vitro culture and we study regulation of genes involved in secondary metabolism, transcriptional reprogramming and pathway signaling. And in in vivo studies, we could use these studies to understand or to manage oxidative stress for activation of defense mechanism and for photosynthetic changes. And these all can be combined to generate mineral uptake, nitrate metabolism, oxidative stress scavenging properties, secondary metabolite production and improved biological activity by the plants. Now let's see what are the parameters for elicitations. So a beneficial elicitation process requires some intense standardization during the pilot studies and the factors which are applicable inapplicable are amalgamation of media and elicitors. So unsuitable doses of elicitors adversely affect the elicitation process which in turn affects overall plant yield and the yield of secondary metabolite also. Fine. So what are the different parameters? Let's see. First is elicitor concentration. 
second is duration of elicitor exposure it is for how much long time period we are providing that exposure or if we are providing that elicitor exposure after intervals then how many times like one time two time or more than that so duration of elicitor exposure treatment schedule so the doses schedule that after two days or two times in a day so just an example this uh, this is how we schedule the treatment now the type of culture so the explant we are using it is a suspension culture so it depends on that also media composition what type of media we are using age of culture and if the culture is subcultured many times or if it is not subcultured what is the age of the culture how many days it has been already with that same culture so all these parameters affect the process of elicitation now interaction for elicitor formation so there are three different types of interactions between plants and microorganisms known that lead to the formation of elicitors so here we are focusing on the microorganism interaction with the plant cell for elicitor process fine so first is direct release of elicitor by the microorganism so if a microorganism is introduced in the uh, culture with the explant or the callus or cells of the plant then if that microorganism is releasing some kind of compound either it could be a toxin or some other compound which directly act as an antigen or as an elicitor to produce a secondary metabolite response in the plant cell or the culture second is microbial enzyme that can act as elicitor or if there is an microbial enzyme which we are extracting first and then we are adding it in the culture uh, so those enzymes could be uh, endo poly galactouronic acid lyase from ervinia carotovaria so this is an example and then the release of phytoalexins by the action of plant enzyme on cell wall of microorganisms so as uh, if there is a microorganism in the subculture and if plant producing some kind of response towards that microorganism in the form of a chemical then ca that chemical can stimulate Uh, the plant cell wall and it could generate a response of elicitation so for example chitosan from fusarium cell wall and alpha 1 3 endoglucanase from phytopathado cell walls now methodology of elicitation so first of all the selection of microorganisms so uh, microorganisms can be used from a wide variety like we can use virus bacteria any algae or fungi which can produce a response and uh, help in production of secondary metabolite so based on the favorable elicitor receptors response or receptor response an ideal microorganism is selected and the quantity of the microbial inoculum is very important for the formation of elicitor now uh, there could be co culture in three forms so plant culture are inoculated with the selected microorganism to form co culture directly so the cultures are transferred to a fresh medium prior to the inoculation with microorganism this helps to stimulate the secondary metabolism now second one is the co culture of plant cells with microorganisms may have some inhibitory effect on the plant cell so in these kind of cases elicitors preparation can be obtained by culturing the selected microorganism on a tissue culture media separately followed by homogenization and autoclaving of the entire culture so that we can get a single moiety which is acting as an elicitor we can isolate that elicitor and use that in the culture so in case of heat labile elicitors the culture homogenate has to be filtered and sterilized then third in, in some co culture systems direct contact of plant cell and microorganisms can be prevented by immobilization or entrapment of uh, the microorganism or the compound which we are using as an elicitor which is derived from microorganism so in these cultures plant microbial interaction occurs by diffusion of the elicitor compound through the medium so there are certain modes of action of elicitors in plants these modes are as you can see the elicitor is used this is the plant cell membrane 
So elicitors could be chitosan, zinc or UV and so on as I have already listed you in the uh, initial of video. Then there is a receptor, the elicitor would act on the receptor. Now that receptor activation could activate the signaling molecule, the secondary messengers which could affect the gene expression of a particular kind of compound. This gene expression, translation, enzyme reaction generate a secondary metabolite. So uh, this all is happening because of the defense response of SAR and IASR. Reversible phosphorylation, it could be iron fluxes increased, it could generate activation of MAPK or it could generate ROS and RNS production or the moieties. Fine. So this is how an elicitor generate its response to produce a secondary metabolite in the plant cell. Certain methods to produce bioactive secondary metabolites through the plant in vitro culture. First, establishment, this is the A which I am talking about, establishment of in vitro cultures after surface sterilization of plant material. Callus formation can be induced on the organ culture or organs like roots or shoot can be regenerated from the callus. So it can be do vice versa. Now the hairy root are obtained by infection of sterilized donor plants or in vitro cultivated material with agrobacterium rhizobium or rhizogenes. So here we are using agrobacterium as a microorganism. So this is the first step we'll do. We'll induce uh, some uh, induction of you know, explant production or callus production induction. Fine. Now the second step is multiplication of primary callus or organ or root or whatever explant we are using and then we are selecting it and then the establishment of liquid culture. We, we are producing a cell suspension culture with that after subculturing the selected explant or callus. The C part is selection of high yielding lines and optimization of culture conditions. Then uh, how can we optimize the culture condition? By checking out nutrient meter composition, inoculum density, temperature, the light, agitation and aeration for the media. Now strategies like elicitation, precursor feeding and immobilizations can be used to improve or to uh, no, get a good productivity. Now the, uh, the last one is D. The bioreactor design will depend on the culture type of course. If we can use a stire tank but also the airlift and bubble column receptor for cell suspension, mist or spray reactors and temporary immersion system for organ cultures. So this is an outline that what we are doing with the plant cell to produce a secondary metabolite. So this is an example of Pacilitaxel. We are producing Pacilitaxel. This is a plant derived drug. So what we are doing, we are taking an explant to induce callus production. Then we are subculturing it in the suspension culture and we use an elicitor type. Elicitors could be nano elicitor, silver nanoparticle or biotic elicitor that can be a yeast extract, chitosan, uh, casein, hydrosylate or a heavy metal elicitor that could be a lead, uh, lead sorry, nickel, cobalt. Uh, so we will choose the elicitor type we are using, the concentration, the time at, at what time we are adding the elicitor after the callus formation or just uh, after adding subculturing or before subculturing we are adding it to the media that how we are adding and at what time we are adding the elicitor. Now cell culture harvesting time. After that we will calculate the cell number that if the callus is producing or not, the nutrient media composition if uh, some if there is a depletion of some important nutrient media so that the callus would not regenerate properly. So all these uh, things would be checked and the uh, secretion of secondary metabolite if there is a secretion of secondary metabolite of any or any other compound or um, we can also check any other effect of the elicitor other than the production of secondary metabolite. Then 
elicitation of cell suspension cultures using optimal elicitation factor then again we can uh, check if uh, re elicitation is necessary or not so we can add elicitation how much dose it is needed we'll do all those processes in this time and we'll allow that culture by subculturing it again and again that it will grow and will produce the secondary metabolite in the quantity which we needed so to to get the yield which we needed we will again uh, use that particular elicitor doses or the amount of elicitor again and again in every sub subculture till the time we did not get the desired yield then we'll isolate the secondary metabolite from the plant cell if it is produced inside the plant cell or if that secondary metabolite uh, is released in the media then we'll isolate it or purify it from there also so this is the outline of uh, the method how we use elicitation to produce secondary metabolite and what is elicitation so i hope this video is informative for you and you will get to know something uh, important about elicitation if you like the video do like share and subscribe and uh, we are also giving you other videos also about bio safety and other uh, subjects so stay with us thank you bye bye